I've been a fan of the Elixir since it came out and it does exactly what I need to do. Uh, long off the tee, uh, holds a lot of greens. I can easily spin it with the wedges. Um, performs very well, okay? When the new ball came out, the Vero X1, I was skeptical because they say it's longer off the tee, but usually that means it's a harder cover. Well, it's not a harder cover. It's just as spinny as the uh, Elixir, uh, but it just pounces off the face. It is amazing. So I highly recommend it if you're looking for an extra couple yards off the tee and still want that same spin number that you get in your wedges and your irons and everything else. It is an awesome ball. Team Encore. See that? Got me for life. For more information, their website is www.encoregolf.com and be more with Encore. Welcome back to Big's Golf Talk right here on Native Family Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and all your Alexa devices, including Amazon Music and yeah. on YouTube TV and BGTV, baby. BGT TV. There you go. It's two T's. Okay, okay Dick. And by the way, what'd you call me? Did you, did, you, did you just call me Richard? No, my name's Dick, not Richard. Dick Vitale. Yeah, oh, baby. You know, yeah, basketball. baby. Yeah, this this, sh this know, show yeah. is going so many wrong directions today. <laughs> Let's get back on track, man. Let's get back on track. All right, uh, Bill the Golf Father Quavis, I, and great, great on par with Amanda. You know, and there's so that many things too to talk said. about. You know, yes. like winning a car. You know, on a hole in one yeah. or, or or something like that, and the value of a car. I mean, come on, Can you imagine that. That, <laughs> that could be great. Grand on that value, you, you know, and, and obviously like, you're labeled for a pro. Yeah, well, just so the people know, when we talked about how they can fill out the survey and get contact with them, it's on our website. So go to bigsgolftalk.net or .com and hit on that press release, and it'll tell you all the information you need, where to go, who to give that information to, and that feedback. And you know what? When they watch our videos, they can put the feedback down on the button. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you know how that goes. We always yeah, we, we, we want to know the feedback. We want it. We want to know as well. Well, let's stay on the roll. Of mm -hmm. the USGA, okay. and as we talked about Bill Golffather Quavos, we kind of gave a hint and a tease. Um, the USGA had announced that Mike Wan will join the organization this summer as CEO, and he will become the eighth top executive in USGA history. You know, last month we talked about Mike Wan announced his intention to step down as LPGA commissioner. And after his organization completes a search for uh, the next commissioner, his transition follows an impressive 11 years at the helm of the LPGA, during which the organization experienced historic growth in virtually every aspect of the business. Now, let's break it down. I'm a fan of Mike Wan. Don't get I love me Mike. I love I, Mike. He's a great individual. He is. Mm -hmm. Great you know, human. And he had developed... And, and, and it still, I he only developed it to a, a certain plateau, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit. And I think he had an opportunity to really take it more to the top. Now, I have an opinion that he did not give himself that opportunity post-COVID. Yeah. Um, and to make this move within professional golf, I'm kind of mixed about it. And I, I kind of wish he would have stayed with the LPGA and, and, and really – just continue that growth. Now we don't know who's going to take his place, and I've thrown a few names out there. Like I thought maybe Annika Sorgstrom. You know, I thought maybe yeah, you said that was your guess. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Somebody like her would, would do good. I mean, she she's out there all the time. I mean, she's pushing, right. as so many other women are. I mean, we we can't lessen the value of what the other ones are doing. You got Paula Creamer out no. there. You got anybody that's anybody out there that no. has you know has done a lot for women's golf. That Dottie that, Pepper. You sure. know what I mean. That could potentially, I don't know, you know, I don't know who's qualified for the job. I think Annika would be the, the top pick on my side. She has so. her business. You know, she has a business and I, and I think she's, she would do what's best for it. I was, I'm, I'm just like disappointed. Nah, that's all I can say. Yeah, I'm really disappointed in the it whole It kind of lets the wind out of your sails, I think. It does. Um, I think that in my mind, I thought he was going a different direction. That's what completely. we talked about. 
Mm -hmm. we and, all talked about that. And so the fact that he just shifted over um, and maybe he just feels like USGA. I mean, I guess going back to, I just gave the USGA a compliment for evolving. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he is the guy to get the USGA to kind of stop being, you know, they're just always kind of stuck. Right. I feel they're a little yeah. set in their ways. They're not. And Mike Wan, as we know, and we've talked about is all about development and yep. evolvement Inclusive. and yes. Yep. And having everything kind of just keep getting better and better. And so maybe it'll help them be a little less staunchy. Um, you know, I, I hope, but I think as far as Mike Wan, we just, it was like, if you can't have him at the LPGA, <laughs> Like I was hoping that he was going to do something crazy, and that's why an offer you can't turn down. That's what we all thought. We we all thought we, when we had the show, we all talked it. about it. And and who, none of us, I don't think any yeah. of us thought that he was gonna. I I I would have lost everything I own if anybody said, "Oh, he's gonna go work." work. But, uh, yeah, he. Oh, work. I would have said no way. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Way. No. I I mean, I would have never thought that. I mean, no, 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 no. no. And when I read it and I saw the press release, I was like, huh. No, I mean, I, 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 I kind of put, put a pin into my balloon. Yeah, you know, let all the air bit, out. A little, because... little bit of respect being lost. Mm -hmm. You, you, you want people to be successful and do everything. Oh, absolutely. But, but it, well, I, 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 yeah, I'm it, just gonna it, say, uh, wow, wrong. that's that's not to say he, as a CEO of USGA, he still can't help the women's side of golf. But mm -hmm. he's and, and he's helping the amateur side of it of the USGA and some some of the professionals right. because there are USGA professional events that's out there, um, both on the women's and the men's side of things. But I just felt he was in a good stride until COVID hit, and bringing the purses up, bringing more sponsorships up, mm -hmm. bringing the fans, getting the fans to the to the um to the events, getting the marketing out there to let the ladies and the girls know, come to our event. We want you to be yeah. a part of this. And really talking to the ladies and say, hey, we want you to interact yeah. with the fans and, and put those memos out there. And I I just hope the next commissioner will will, will elevate what he did and I not give it at that toll. Man, it's going to be, I mean, I, and I know that sometimes as humans, we don't adapt super well to brand new fresh change. It's like when you hear a brand new song on the radio and you're like, what is this? But once you learn it and become familiar, you're like, hey, this is really good. Yeah. Um, we don't like what we don't know. And so I think with Mike, you know, anybody that comes in for a while, it's going to take some adjustment because he's not Mike or she's not yeah. Mike. And yeah. so... Um, but I, I think that the Annika thing is a great point because Annika has not only the experience of being a player and being through that, but like she she just has so much on the business development side that I think she could bring to the table. And that's not to discredit other people like Bill was saying, you know, Paula yeah. and Dottie, and they've done great things. But I think Annika's the most in the business mindset of player development. Yeah. Well, she, does, she, she has a background. Yeah. She has the respect and well liked globally, yeah, sure. not yeah. just amongst. The, yes, that's you know, the other globally, thing. Globally, you you mentioned Annika Sorenstrom. Everybody, and everybody, knows. everybody in the world knows who she is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. And I, and I think she she could potentially bring it to a new height, and everything that she's doing. You know, Mike did a great job bringing in the the purses, raising the money that the girls were getting right. per tour. Are they where they're supposed to be? Mm -hmm. nah. But where they were to where they are, yes. But, well, I mean, he, he did bring money. I mean, some of the purses were doubled. That doesn't mean that they were like, oh, they were right. double than what they were. So, I mean, he did create new heights. But whoever comes in, we hope that mm -hmm. they bring in even more. Because like I've said in the past, for guys like me and Biggs and playing with you and seeing what you can do and what those girls do, those girls put most – amateur men to oh, shame man. i truly enjoy watching them play i think what they do is amazing uh sometimes they don't get that credential because they're i mean some of the girls are hitting that ball 300 plus yards with no problem at, at all but oh, yeah I, I don't i don't think they get quite i, I don't want to use their word respect but i don't think they get their due you know what I mean? Because no, some of them I are just so. amazing out there. And, you know, we hear about the guys, oh, I got to do this. I got to go here. I, I, well, you know mm -hmm. what? That, that girl's working 
almost probably double as hard to get that same right. kind of respect that a guy goes in and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to play golf. Uh, and, and what, I, I just think that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping whoever takes in brings them the respect and the amount of money that they deserve. Well, let, let me ask so you this. I, I can't think of anybody else or get excited about anybody else, but Annika, but Bill, can you think of any other names that you could get excited for to be the next LPGA commissioner and say, yeah, that person can do that job. Honestly, now with with everything that Annika's done, I mean, Women's Golf Day, which I don't think it should just be one day. I think it should be every day. So now they're starting to push it more. It's grown. Mm -hmm. The movement right. has grown. And the more women and girls that we get involved, the more it's going to be. The whole thing is women are the ones that are taking their boys and their girls to the golf course. A lot of them, sure. you know, dad's got to go out and work. If he's not a golf pro, he's going to work. Mom's the one that's doing the golf lessons and everything else. I, I just want, I just, yeah, I think Annika's, she's going to be my, I don't think anybody besides her could do what she could do, but we, we don't know her position. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know. Nobody said anything. I know the guy behind Mike. Well, I was going to say, man. who, right. Yeah. So that's it, like moving up the leaderboard if he's ready for that role and or wanting that role. I've um, seen him at a lot of the Symmetra events, you know, like with, with French yeah. Lick, you know, me and him were sitting down outside and mm -hmm. I was eating my ice cream cone, yep. talking to him. Of course you and were. Of course. And then when I went down to, to the other side, the other coast of Florida, where they have the championships, where they're getting their cards, mm -hmm. I got to break bread with them. We had lunch. We talked. We did the stuff. So, yeah, his second in command, if if they don't go with a woman, I think he would be ideal because he was in the forefront of everything. If you didn't right. see Mike, you see him. So they, they got a couple people behind there. But I honestly, I would like to see a woman get that spot. Yeah. And I think Annika is um... – like I, the only thing I worry about someone that isn't Annika, that is like Apollo Kramer, let's just say mm -hmm. knows the game very well, knows what it's like to wrestle around with player development. But I think the, the experience and the age and the, I've been through a ton of business opportunities and things, um, not just so closely relatable to being a player, but has seen the other side. And so, you know, there's tons of girls on tour that would be great to give insight on player development, but Absolutely. that doesn't make them a great player developer. Like, yeah. it, you know what I mean? So it's going to be, it's going to be tough. And the only person like you had said was his, his understudy essentially yep. who was next in the chain. And if but they couldn't get Annika, the only other person, honestly, that that's continually popped in my mind is Nancy Lopez. She oh, knows how to run a business. She's got her time. She's paid her dues. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, I've seen her in a lot of tournaments. I see her out yeah. there with the professional, with the amateurs, mm -hmm. charities. She's right? out there. And Honestly, if if Annika wasn't there, and and I I, I would pick her, so I have to change it. That's she she would be my my next pick because she she covers it all. You you need somebody that has all the dynamics, everything, yep. how to make it a business, how to make money for the people, how to go out there. Right. Who's going to have that impression when they go and talk? People well, and are going to want to interact. be respected by the players themselves. Exactly. You can't, you can't just put a business person. If, if those players don't respect that person, you're not going to get any feedback or don't know that person. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the cooperation. I'm sorry. No. You're just not going to. I think no. most, I would say 99.9% .9 of female tour players mm -hmm. look to Annika for, I, mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, I saw it a lot when I was in France doing, covering the Evian um, championship. I, you know, Annika is there to do her Rolex thing in the Annika um, major award. And so when we were there, it's just amazing. Like these women that are doing oh. the same thing yeah. she did, mm -hmm. look at her like she is a god. Like she god is just, goddess. She's she a goddess. is, yeah, a goddess. She's just <laughs> so much higher than they are when, mm -hmm. and I get it, she's great. But yeah. it's amazing they they idolize her and which is awesome. But like you said, I think we need something like it there to get the girls on board and get the respect. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sometimes you throw a dude in the mix. Mike, he was great and he everyone was. loved and adored him. But yep. I think that's pretty rare for the well, females you, to be like want, this guy and, doesn't and agree, even know man, what he's doing. I agree. Mike Wan was a rare individual, a real a he rare was, commissioner. 
you know, the probably one of the best commissioners. Yeah, probably one of the best commissioners in a long time on the LPGA tour, and yeah. and such significant growth. The growth just wasn't didn't catch up to where it should be. But there was, like mm-hmm. Bill said, double purses. But was right. still the purses not it was not enough, but still doubled the money. Right. Um, where we had previous right. commissioners before Mike won, that didn't happen with. There right. was growth and and baby steps. But mm-hmm. Mike Wan took Bigfoot steps and, yep. and really took the LPGA. Not every player on the LPGA tour, and I'm not trying to sound sexist, but they are females, and is going to look at a man to lead them. Mike Wan was certainly a special right. individual. They're not. They're. Yep. I'm telling you, some of these girls are going to take one look at somebody that they're not familiar with, and it's a it's a male telling them how they should run their tour yes. um, and how to be better at their job. Not going to fly. Um, and that's why it's going to be a very delicate transition. Well, if you look at it, I mean, and, and like big said, it's not about the, the, the fact that they're women and stuff like that. You can watch TV now. And honestly, we got to a point when I would turn on the TV and I would look at some of the girls, the way they were dressed. I'm like, oh, I don't want to watch this anymore because it, it, it was like, what am I watching golf for? I, I didn't want to watch it. Now you watch mm-hmm. girls are out there with their pants. They got their belts. Yep. They're looking stylish, still cool and everything. And they're Longer kicking. Short, yeah. You know? And the thing is they are, you go over there and now men are paying attention to their game. Not what they look like. <laughs> not if they got ponytails, we're looking at them as a golfer. And that's the, that was my whole as thing. Back before. Yeah. You know what? You need them to be an athlete. You need them to be a pro golfer. Not, not a don't girl. look. Yeah. You, you don't want that. Yeah. I'm, some women probably look at, I know we don't look at the guys and go, Oh my God, look at, look at Ricky. No, we don't care that Ricky's cute. A woman might look at it, but you know what? The golfer girls, they look at him. Yeah. He's cute. He got game. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking at. I want to see who has game. That's the only thing I care about. Sell me the game, grow the game. And and that's what we need. We need somebody to get in there and help grow the women's game to the next level because it's right. wide open. Golf is the only industry right now that's doing better than before right. COVID. So yeah. why? Right. Where, where's the money? The money's there. You haven't wasted well, any money. There's not. I mean, there has to be money somewhere. One thing that Mike Wan did very a very uh, great job at was getting, so we know as players, we want, like you said, you know, it's, we want to be respected as athletes and not just, but he all, he went in and he said, okay, how do we get you to be better at interacting and, and putting on a show while focusing on something that's very important and it's career you know, yeah. career setting. So, um, you know, the the fact I would say over the last five to 10 years, the tour has gotten so much better where these girls know how to act in a pro-am. You know, I run a business that's surrounded by pro-ams and that style of entertainment golf. Mm-hmm. And that's where you get your sponsors. That's where you get your VIP people. And when the girls go out there and don't know how to interact or how to do their job as a player, um, because there is more than just playing golf, yeah. he worked so hard on that side. Man, it made such a difference because I'm telling you, these women, I've played in pro-ams with the girls that are playing full-time LPGA, and some of them have no chance of ever entertaining clients. You know, they just, they don't know. They just go out there and they just play and they don't talk to anybody. And they, and I'm like, this is the guy that sponsored half the event. Like, Mm -hmm. how do you not make him feel like he's the most amazing person on the planet? Um, So I think those are the things that whoever comes in has to continue what Mike Juan was doing. Yeah, I agree. I I think that's what you have to do, man. That's the way to grow it. Learn. Everybody has to learn. To kind of wrap this up, that's why I'm kind of, lost that little respect because I just felt that he was not finished. He was not finished at a mission that he started and a great mission and a great yeah. job he had done. But I just feel like he kind of stepped out and moved into a different area of golf, which yeah. I think if he would have been a CEO of a golf equipment company, I think we would understand that more than him exactly. becoming a, a CEO of another organization where he was not, I don't, in my personal opinion, not finished with the LPGA. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree, Biggs. I, I, I think his, his job, well, even though he did a great job, I, I don't think he finished it. You know what I mean? And I know everybody wants to no, make money. And in the end, that's what it's about. But, you know, you're saying, oh, we, I took well, it. Well, and, and I, make I money too. Let's have somebody in the leadership right. that exactly. is, is developing that. And it, it just wasn't finished yet. And that's, that's, that's the only thing. That's that other side from playing. Mm-hmm. Mike said, if you ladies want to get more people sponsoring and throwing their money so we can have bigger purses, you mm-hmm. have to know how to also be a professional golfer, not just a playing professional. And you mm-hmm. have to understand what it means to communicate with those sponsors and what it means to uphold your duty as a business instead of just, I'm telling you, he he did wonders. Like some of the emails that were sent out during his reign were awesome to the girls. Yeah. yeah. Well, whoever well, replaces him. Let's get the best. We're wishing him the best of luck, but <laughs> yeah, got big yeah. shoes to fill. Exactly right. All right. Well, that does it for this segment. And Amanda, have a great weekend. We're going to head guys. into hour number two in uh, next segment here on BGT TV and Big Golf Talk Radio. And uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. And see you next week, Amanda. Bye. All right. We'll be right back right after this.